just landed in Japan. So just landed in Japan, uh, just got off a flight from uh, San Francisco on board United in Premium Plus. Um, but now we're off to our next connecting flight, flying on ANA in the Premium Economy Cabin to Singapore. First time being back in Japan in a couple of years, so pretty excited to be back here. Where are we going? You're playing Pokemon? <laughs> So we're heading over to the a, a lounge to uh, freshen up, maybe take a quick shower, clean up uh, before our next flight. So here are the escalators up to the a, a lounge, but unfortunately we never made it in as they had restricted entry for priority pass holders due to overcrowding. Instead, we just found a quiet area to chill until our next flight. Speaking of our next flight, here's the a, a Dreamliner that will be taking us to Singapore. Soon enough, it was time to board from gate 32. As to be expected in Japan, boarding began right on time. Interestingly, ANA uses different boarding groups for window and aisle passengers, Hi. even within the same cabin. As I had a window seat, I was able to board in group 3, while Peterson had an aisle seat, so he boarded as part of group 5. ANA's premium economy cabin on this Boeing 787-9 consists of only 14 seats spread out over two rows in a 232 configuration. The bulkhead dividers in the rear and front separate the premium economy seats from economy and business, providing a very intimate cabin. The seats are upholstered in the classic ANA blue, but it did feel a little dated to me. From my seat 16A, you can see a partial engine view over the wing. In terms of seat features, you get an 11-inch LCD touch monitor. To the side of that is a coat hook. Beneath the screen is a USB power port. As this flight was taken mid-2022, masks were provided at each seat, as well as a cleansing wipe. You also get a set of headphones to use with the IFE. A pair of a, &A slippers are provided. In the seat pocket, you'll find the sickness bag and the 787 safety card. A footrest is provided for all seats except the bulkhead seats. In this case, given the cabin only consists of two rows, the footrest is only available in the second row. With the footrest stowed, you do get a lot of legroom. Below the center console, you'll find the IFE controller. Beside that is the headphone jack. A small tray can be extended for more surface area to put something like a drink. At the bottom of the seat by the leg rest is a universal power outlet, one for each seat. Under the armrest is the tray table, which swings out like so. It's relatively sturdy for this kind of design. The table can be moved forward and backward. A flexible reading light is found by the side of the headrest.
The sides of the headrest can be folded in for more support while sleeping. Two seat control buttons are found on the inner side of the armrest, one for leg rest extension and one for recline. Note that the rear bulkhead does not restrict the recline. A small pillow is provided on the seat for some extra support. You also get a light blanket as well in case it gets cold in the cabin. From my experience though, ANA usually keeps their cabins quite warm. Since a cleaning wipe was provided, I proceeded to wipe down the seat surfaces before use. The IFE screen felt a bit dated in terms of the UI. It made browsing the movie and TV content a bit more cumbersome.
Today's evening flight from Tokyo Narita to Singapore will take just over 6 hours, traveling over 3400 kilometers. Here are the headphones provided. They felt a bit flimsy, but other than that, they got the job done. Before the meal service, a wet towelette was handed out. To kick things off, I had a green tea with some rice crackers. The choice of meal service was between grilled teriyaki chicken and hamburger patty. I opted for the patty. Everything was served on one tray and consisted of a sushi roll, edamame, some kind of cold dish with a yuzu jelly on top, the hamburger patty with some veggies and mashed potato on the side, a bottle of water, a bread bun with some butter, a salad, and cheese and crackers. I also ordered a coke as well. The meal was actually really good. I always love how Japanese meals give you so many little dishes to try. At the end of the meal, Haagen-Dazs ice cream was served. After the meal, the flight was pretty uneventful as I napped and lazily watched some stuff on the IFE. With just under 2 hours to go in the flight, another light snack was served, consisting of a packaged pastry and a cup of instant pasta. I ordered a coffee for some much needed energy. Before the end of the service, the crew came by to offer milk biscuits and a and candy. Pretty soon, we were on final approach into Singapore, just after midnight. service was what you'd expect from typical Japanese hospitality. The service was very efficient and friendly. While the soft product was great, I wasn't too impressed by the seat or the IFE. It all felt a bit dated and in need of a refresh. I know that ANA offers a newer version of their premium economy on their 787-10, A380 and select 777 aircraft. I would really love to give those a try. Nevertheless, it was a very comfortable flight to Singapore and another great flight with ANA. And with that, it's a wrap for this trip report. Thanks for following along and checking out my ANA Premium Economy experience. Until next time, thanks for watching, happy travels, and I'll see you in the next one.